Hello and welcome to episode 188 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 12th, 2023. Today I'm wearing something brand new, the cowl that I showed you last week and something old, but I think I haven't worn it on the podcast yet. I thought I'd gone through all the things that I own, but uh, when I looked through my list, I couldn't find the top that I'm wearing. So maybe this is its first time on the podcast. But first to the cowl loop that I'm wearing. This is a pattern by Faye Kennington, um, who calls herself Yuki Knits. And it's a new design that she hasn't published yet. Um, but I have a link prepared on my Ravelry page. So as soon as the pattern is published, there will be a link on my project page and you can get to the pattern in case you want to knit it. It's um, originally meant to be a scarf, but I knit fewer of these um, motifs and I sewed them together as a loop or cowl. And this is one way of wearing it where I pulled it over my shoulders a little bit and I um, paid attention that I have the points sort of offset to each other and I can show off the motifs nicely, but you could also just pull it up and wear it loosely around the neck. You can still show off the motifs. You can move it around depending on which color you want to show or you want to highlight depending on what you're wearing. And um, yeah, so I really like these things where every motif is a bit different. For example, this one is the only motif where I used a different yarn. Um, so I could sort of highlight that and this looks a lot darker now. But if I turn it this way, then I have the more, the lighter motifs showing. Yeah, so I really like it. And if I want it really snug and warm around the neck, I can actually pull it around my neck twice and it's still comfortable. I'm not <laughs> joking myself. Um, and again, when I wear it like this, I was playing around with it a little bit. I can choose a motif, for example, this one, and I can decide to really show this one off and um, pull it around so that one of them shows more than the others or actually this one shows all the others are hidden. <laughs> yeah, but I really like it. But even though I like it a lot, I'm not going to keep it. So this is going to be the only time I'm going to show it on the podcast because you may remember that I told you that I got the yarn from a friend uh, when uh, I told friends that I was looking for, for some yarn to knit this um, project. She um, sent me a picture and asked if that would be a good one. And I said, it's fantastic. And then she just gave me the yarn to knit um, this pattern. And then I thought once it was done, I asked her if she was interested to have the, um, the cowl, if she liked it, because she originally chose the yarn and she loved it. And uh, so she's going to get this loop. Yeah, and the top I'm wearing um, was not knit by myself, but it was knit by a former colleague and who's still my friend and she knits probably as much as I do. And then she um, tends to give things away when she has too many things or if they don't fit her properly. And I'm a little smaller than she is. So um, I tend to get the things that end up being a little too small. And I don't know which yarn she used for this top. And I am pretty sure that she did not use a pattern. She tends to make up her own things a lot. And it's a fairly simple stockinette stitch top with um, a little crochet edging and crochet, um, see, are they called straps? I don't know. And there's a crochet edge on the bottom edge of um, the front and back. So it's a very simple, but I think very nice knit. I like the color a lot. And um, yeah, so now it's getting its first day on the podcast, unless my um, notes are um, not correct. I sometimes, I sometimes um, give projects a different name <laughs> and then I don't realize that I've shown them before. So if you see the top in an old episode, you can let me know. Um, let's see, which one do I want to show off? Yeah, I think 
I, I think I would like one that's a bit, a bit lighter. Or maybe this one. I like this one. Okay. So that's what I'm wearing today. On to finished objects. I have two finished objects and I did not cast on a new thing. I know it's a miracle <laughs> and it's not going to last long. The only reason I didn't start my new project was that I didn't bring the proper needle home with me for the weekend. So I already know what I'm going to knit um, and I will probably cast on later today. But as to the finished objects, the older project that I finished is my fragmentation shawl by Stephen West. And I have to get up again because it's just too big to fit in the frame otherwise. Um, I used Opal yarn. It's a colorway out of their beauty series. So the yarn is a bit softer than the uh, normal Opal yarn. Um, and it's one of the colorways that has these very clear stripes. And that's the reason I chose it because with the fragmentation shawl, what you're supposed to be doing is change the color every so many rows. And if you do that, you get stripes that are the same height all the way through. But because I just uh, use this um, one colorway, the more stitches I had per wedge, the smaller the stripes got. But um, I didn't mind that. I think it looks quite interesting and nice. And all I had to do is make sure that I started at the proper point whenever I started a new wedge to make sure that um, the colors were sort of moving upwards or downward, downwards, depending on where you look from. And uh, when I started a new, new ball, I had to make sure that I attached it at the same point in the color, um, in the colorway, in the color, it should be a different word, can't think of it right now. But anyway, yeah. And so there were seven wedges to be knit. I really like it. I hope to be wearing it next week. I may only wear it very shortly if it stays this warm. <laughs> but I think um, I haven't washed it yet. I'm probably not going to block it because it's knitting garter stitch. It doesn't roll or anything. It doesn't have a lace pattern that needs pulling. So, um, and the size is quite nice. I might stretch it a little bit, but maybe I won't. Maybe I won't pin it down. Maybe I'll just lay it flat and let it dry and um, it'll stay this size. And then I can wear it next week and I can, can wear it a lot as soon as the temperatures get colder. So that's the first finished object. And the next one, uh, another pair of film reel socks. So this is the fifth pair of film reel socks that I've knit and they should be the fourth pair that I've knit with um, with the colorway out of the Cats and Dogs series by um, Opal and I'm knitting them for my sister's family so everyone in her family gets at least one pair of film reel socks and um, yeah, with this, once I've given this pair, every all of the five people I'm knitting for will have one pair of film reel socks. But one of my nephews got a different color because the Cats and Dogs series wasn't out when it was his birthday last year. So I decided he'll get another pair this year out of the Cats and Dogs series. And then my other nephew <laughs> was jealous that he only gets one pair so he will get another pair and I'm not quite sure whether he'll get another color from the Cats and Dogs series or whether I'll go for a different colorway and then the last pair that I'm going to knit will be one for myself and I am going to use all the colors in the Cats and Dogs series so that should be exciting but I'll probably knit the nephew socks first so it might take a while until I get to my socks yeah, so that's the finished objects. Was there anything else I needed to say about the socks? I don't know. Um, I think it's the most beautiful color in the series. <laughs> but yeah, no surprise there. Then on to works in progress. And I continue with the socks as usual. My oldest pair of socks are the um, pattern battle socks that I'm knitting out of this colorway of the Opal 
Abo Opal subscription yarn. I'm knitting a lace pattern out of um, this fairly new book that I have with lace pattern socks and I just added some rounds. So I think last time I'd done a bit of the lace pattern and now I've I think I've just finished the first pattern repeat and just started the second pattern repeat. I think it's two full patterns for the leg and then I'll knit the heel and so on and so forth. Not a lot new, but um, yeah, so I'm trying to get them finished because the next pattern battle is starting today. Um, the official cast on time is today lunchtime. German lunch, uh, German high noon, <laughs> and um, but I probably won't cast them on. I've already chosen a pattern and I've already um, put it down in the Opal group, group but um, I probably wait to cast on until I finish those socks. Okay, the next sock that I have on my needle, I forgot to show last week. I'm so sorry. I put it um, a bit to the side and I just completely forgot about it. And that's um, a sock madness pattern and it's the pattern for the round six this year. It's called Three Times a Cable. I think I'd shown them once um, on the podcast before and then last week I forgot. And I'm using those two colors. This is Schafparte, so this is German yarn. Um, and this is Country, which is the latest series by Opal. And I know it's a bit crazy to be pairing two variegated colors, but I'm sometimes crazy that way. So it started off with the two separate cuffs and then you knit them together. And then you knit three different patterns, which is why it's called uh, three times a cable. And then one of the patterns is this one where you only, um, oh no, this is the pattern where you cable one light stitch and one dark stitch and you get this pattern and this is the pattern where you only cable the light colored stitches and the dark yarn runs straight behind the cable and then this is the two color cable that's just a two color pattern and it's supposed to look like a cable if you use solid colors it's really um it's very obviously a cable, but with my color choice, <laughs> not as clear. And then I started knitting the increases for the strong heel or increase heel. And the pattern that you get on the back of the heel is the same pattern as on the front of the sock, but with the colors reversed. So it's basically the same pattern, but whereas I have the light stripes on a dark background, I now have the dark stripes on the light background and I finished the increases and I did the heel turn which is done in one color and I've just resumed knitting in the round I think for three rounds and now there will be decreases and the and then I'm going to knit a two color pattern on the sole of the sock and I'll continue the this um, cable pattern on the top of the foot so this is the height of the leg of the sock and now I'm going to sort of knit this direction I hope it makes sense <laughs> yep it's um it's a knit where I have to concentrate quite a bit and with the two big balls of yarn it's it's a fairly big project so I mostly knit that at home um, while watching TV which some people would call crazy, but that's the kind of TV knitting that I like. <laughs> yeah, so the third pair of socks that I'm knitting at the moment are the colorful Black Dragon socks. These are a very simple knit, so that's what probably a lot of people would call TV knitting because you don't really have to look. I sometimes knit that when I watch TV but I'll, I'd rather read while I knit this or talk to people or concentrate on something else Um, yeah and I had done this black and white ribbing then the colorful black dragon and then I did another or I did the heel in black and white again and now I'm knitting on the foot and um, yeah I really enjoy this sock it's a very enjoyable um, brainless knit 
and I'm putting all these um, stitch markers in every 10 rounds and I'm using this gadget here to help me um, keep track on of when I've um, finished with 10 rounds. So every round when I get to the beginning of round I will move it one ring further on and then uh, once I get to the bottom I know this is the 10th round and then I can put the stitch marker and then I'll start with the first round again. Um, on the German channel somebody asked if there was an if there were instructions for this kind of row counter. My friend who made it said there wasn't, she couldn't find anything, at least not in German. I don't know if there's an English instruction somewhere, but she just um, used 10 of these round thingies and then she put the beads with the numbers in between. I've seen another one that another friend of mine made and she only put 10 of these um, sort of marker rings next to each other without numbers and but she there must be something to differentiate top and bottom so you know where to start and then where to end and then she puts like a marker on one of the rings and you start that off on the first one until you've done the first 10 and then you move that to the second then you do the next 10 and so on and so forth so that's another way of doing it very happy with this project. <clears throat> so that's all the socks I have on the needles right now. The next project um, is the Mystery Gnome by Sarah Shira. The um, current Mystery Gnome is called The More You Gnome. And if you are knitting along, you don't want to see... Oh, before I show what I've knit, I'll just quickly talk about my yarn choice. And I don't know, my, um, my yarn choice is lately have not been the most clever ones, um, but it doesn't matter. So this is a three color gnome and I showed you that these are the three colors that I'm using. And color one is the one that's also used for the beard. So I use the, the one with white and a bit of color for color one. And then she said to use color one and two with a strong contrast. So what I should have done is use those two as one and two. And then the third color, she said, it can be a bit more colorful, maybe speckled or variegated or something. So this should have been color three. But for some reason, when I started knitting, I decided this was going to be one, this was two, and there was, this was three. So I do not have a strong contrast. And the one that can go crazy is a solid color. So it's really a bit stupid. But it's what happens. And then the first four clues you only knit with one color. So last, now I'm going to show pieces. Last week I showed you, this was um, clue one, and then two and three, I knit this funny thing. And then the clue four, I knit this, whatever this is. And I made this. And I think at this point I realized there wasn't a lot of contrast between color one and two, but I thought, whatever. But then the next clue came and then I realized why color one and two should have a strong contrast because this was color, uh, was the next clue. And that um, explained what this was going to be. And then the next two clues, I finished knitting this. And the pattern is almost invisible with my yarn choice. You do see there's a bit of pattern there, but um, yeah, but I thought if I switch colors around now then either it's not going to um, look the way it's supposed to look or I, sh I have to re-knit either this or th I probably I should have re-knit this and this if I was going to switch the colors and I just didn't feel up to it so this is the way this looks I'm not showing anything anymore and uh, I think the next clue comes out today and I'll just keep knitting and it's going to be a fun gnome. And if I want another gnome in the same pattern with a better color choice, I can knit another one. They're not huge, they don't take forever. So that's why I decided to stick with the colors the way they are. The next um, project is the Double Knit Brioche Hat by Nathan Taylor. And I must say, I'm very happy with the color choice <laughs> I um, made there. I 
I'm using this Opal 100 Wasser yarn, which is um, very light but colorful. And I'm using a solid color, almost solid color for the contrast color. And that's a really good idea. And I finished knitting the rib of the hat. Yeah, and I think I already started with the, with the um, what's it? I think it's honeycomb brioche in English. Keep forgetting. But I just love the way this looks. I really, really like it a lot. And I'm just absolutely in love with the fact that it's absolutely reversible. So you have this fantastic pattern that I love so much on both sides. And it's so simple to knit and it's such a good idea. And I really love it. Um, I think the hat is going to be smaller than I expected. So I may not keep it. I may still keep it. I don't know. Um, I'll decide that a bit later when it's a bit bigger and I have more to try on and to see if it's comfortable or not. Um, I really like the um, the stripes in the yarn. So when you knit a sock, they are fairly white stripes, but with the hat and having more stitches, I don't have that many stitches to be honest. Um, it's one of those things about brioche. You need a you use a lot fewer stitches than you would think. But what I'm trying to say is I still haven't finished one color repeat. So I think I'm just about to, I think when these colors uh, are done, I'm going back into this color and that's where the color repeat is going to, that's when the color repeat is going to repeat. <laughs> Sounds a bit funny, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I really love the, um, fact that this is going to be a reversible hat and um, I also love the fact that with this way of knitting brioche you actually see mostly one color and only a little bit of the other color. Um, some time ago I knit uh, leg warmers for myself and I chose black and a variegated blue yarn thinking I could wear them either as blue leg warmers or black leg warmers but with normal brioche you always see both colors yes one is maybe a bit more pronounced and you can you you see that the knit stitches are in one color and the in between is the other color but it's still a very very much a two color pattern no matter what side you wear outside but with this with this honeycomb brioche it's mainly the light color with a little bit of blue and if you look at the other side, it's mainly the blue with a little bit of light in the background. And I just love that. And I'm pretty sure I need leg warmers in this pattern. Not quite sure yet what colors, but I really need this. <laughs> Not quite sure whether they, they're going to have some sort of ribbing on the top and bottom, or if I can get away with knitting leg warmers just in this pattern but I will probably have to experiment a little bit with that. Yeah, so that's the Double Knit Brioche hat. It's a pattern by Nathan Taylor out of his new book, Double Knit Brioche. Um, it's the, thank you, Beata, I think is her name, pattern. Um, yeah, and fantastic book. Can't recommend it enough. So that's that, then on to the only garment I'm knitting at the moment and that's the cashmere pullover um, that I'm knitting out of the book something with circular yokes beautiful circular yokes something like that and I started off knitting this beautiful circular yoke <laughs> in black and gray this is the cashmere yarn by Hansa Farm um, I then knit a bit of the front and back then I knit parts of the sleeve then I did the neck ribbing and now I've attached my last ball of yarn in the first die lot and I still have this much left and I'm hoping that when I finish knitting this ball um, that I can start knitting the ribbing and then I'll do ribbing on the sleeves and I'll do those ribbings with the same die lot that I used for the neckband, but you can already see with um, with this ribbing and the pattern, it just both looks black. I can't really see a difference in the die lot, so that's good. 
Um, I've done several decreases for the front and back because it was the um, the yoke is quite wide. It's actually a little bit too big, but I was too lazy to start over, so I'm keeping it this way. But I've decided that I've done enough decreases, so I'm not decreasing anymore. Right now, I'm just knitting, knitting, knitting. Absolute simple knitting. Um, I'm not really reading while I do that because I sometimes split the yarn while I knit. So I do pay a little bit attention um, and I enjoy every minute. It's such a soft and wonderful yarn. So that's that. And then I did bring the alpaca lace granny square, huge granny square with me today. Didn't show it last week because I didn't get around to crocheting on it. But uh, last week I finished the second black round that I was working on. And I've started the last dark gray round. I you can see the slight difference. So this is the dark gray, two rounds black, then dark gray, two rounds black, another round in dark gray. And then I'm going to add one or two rounds in the black, and then I'll do the last round with the beads in it. Still, I haven't tried out the beads that I got as a present, um, but yeah, we'll see. So this, it's really big now, and I'm very, very happy. Um, I can't wait to finish it, but it takes forever to finish one of those rounds. Um, I still have this much left of the dark grey. I'm pretty sure there should be enough for the rest of the round. And then I have quite a bit of the black ball of yarn, so that should be no problem. And that takes us to the last project. That's the um, crochet along we're doing. We're crocheting a hexagon cardigan. You can use the um, pattern Horizon, Horizon on the hobby website. And my first half of the cardigan was this one. I'm using two different colorways by Opal, Rainforest yarn. So this is the blue color, uh, the blue yarn that I'm using for the edges here to make it wider and longer. For the sleeve, I only use the red yarn except for the two rows that I used to attach the sleeves. And my second piece of the cardigan, um, I think last week I was still working on the red hexagon and now I have added a few, I oh know, I think I've already, I had already done two rows of the blue where I'm only adding rows to three parts of the hexagon, three sides of the hexagon are growing the other three sides are remaining the same so that I can form the sleeve out of those three sides and the other three sides will be the front and back. So there's a few more rows to crochet, then I can close the sleeve and then I will probably add a few more rows to the back to get a bit more of a neckline and then I can crochet them together and try it on and then I can make decisions on how much longer I want the cardigan to be, whether I want to add more to the fronts because I do want to put buttons on um, on the cardigan and if I add a few rows to the back, it means the pieces are moving away from each other. So I may have to add a few more uh, rows to the fronts and I could do it, I could do the fronts and then the lower edge of the front and back and then the other front, I could make it grow in three directions again. And then once the fronts meet here, I could switch to only crocheting lengthwise. So only to the lower bits of the front and back. And once I finish that, or maybe in between, I can see if I want, to get, uh, want the sleeves to be longer, which I will probably want. But I have to first finish the back so that I know how wide the cardigan is because that determines how long the sleeves are going to be. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, a project where you have to try things on a lot, which is something I like. And, uh, and also a project where you can make um, the cardigan fit your body exactly the way you like it. And that's another thing I like a lot. Yeah, so that was everything. 
I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!